Hi, this is Keir from Shopify. Today we're going to have a look at liquid filters. Okay, I've got my demo store, my Shopify for Designers uh, Shopify store open here, and I'm on the page uh, which shows us a beautiful red mustache mug made in Brooklyn. Uh, as you can see, it's £25 and it's got the currency symbol there, that's worth taking note of for our demo. And we've got our product description here and our product title. Now I'm just going to go to my text editor which is Sublime Text 2 and I've already got my product.liquid template open there so I'm just going to close these other ones so we can see it. Okay let's have a look at filters. Now we have a few filters in use here. The first one that I want to show you is the money filter. In this particular template uh, we're dealing with the output here, the liquid output variant price every product can have uh, any number of variants think of that as like sizes, colors, that kind of thing and what we're outputting here is the variant price and you'll notice that the, there's a pipe here followed by the word money now the pipe indicates that we are passing it through a filter the way I like to describe filters is that you start on the left with a piece of data in this case the price and then you filter it through one or more uh, filters and what comes out at the other end is the data that's been manipulated or changed. So let's have a look at what happens when we don't have the money filter. I'm just going to save that back out. Now if I refresh you'll notice actually before I do that let's have a quick look we've got the pound sign there but if I refresh now you'll notice that all I have is uh, 2,500, 2,500 pence uh, which isn't really very helpful so let me go and filter that back through with the money filter and show you once again what happens. Okay, By doing that we've added back in the uh, pound symbol here. Uh, that's the currency that's set within your admin. Obviously if it was dollars or euros that's what would appear there. So filters are useful in that respect. They allow us to format text in a certain way without having to worry about it. Um, you can enter the price in the admin and then depending on the currency that's set uh, we can output the correct symbol. This means that we can use our themes in multiple stores with multiple currencies and not have to worry about it. What other money options have we got when it comes to filtering? Well, a really good place to start to find out about all the liquid filters is Mark Dunkley's Cheat Sheet which you'll find at cheat.markdunkley.com. You can also have a look at the uh, Shopify docs, the theme docs, which is docs.shopify.com slash themes and you'll find a link to money filter. So let's have a look. So there was our money filter that we already used. Now let's see what this one, money with currency, wraps the amount with the currency symbol and the currency abbreviation. So let's try that and see what happens. I'm just going to copy that and replace my filter with money with currency and uh, the theme tools updated that for me so if I go back and now not only do I have the pound sign but I also have the currency abbreviation as well now are there any more we could look at um, so this is Mark's cheat sheet money without currency that might be quite interesting so just let me copy that paste that back in and let's have a look what happens as a result of that. So now it's put the decimal point in but I don't have any currency symbol or currency abbreviation. So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve but uh, certainly one of those money filters will absolutely help you. But it doesn't stop uh, just with money filters or very basic stuff like that. We have some really really helpful uh, filters that allow us to generate things like script tags and link tags. Let me have a quick look in my theme.liquid, which is in the layout folder, and here we've got uh, some output, some liquid output, and uh, style.css. Okay, so this is something to do with my style sheet, which lives in the assets folder. Uh, you notice here actually that it's got the .liquid extension, uh, which means we can use liquid code within it when we come to work with theme settings and that kind of stuff. Uh, we don't actually have to pass that in there. Uh, Shopify will work it out for us, no problem. And now we've got a couple more filters here. So what this means is we can actually pass a piece of data through multiple filters uh, to generate uh, a new piece of output. So let's have a look in the docs and see what the asset URL does first. Asset. Okay. If we use the asset URL filter, it returns the URL of an asset. 
So this will give us the full path to the actual document on the Shopify CDN. So if I just have a quick look in the inspector at this particular image for example, you'll notice that this does live on the Shopify CDN. There's no way we'd be able to work out that particular uh, path to the product. We've no idea where Shopify is going to place that file for us. And of course this theme uh, could be used in multiple shops and so we wouldn't necessarily know the unique code for that shop. So the filter A helps us do that but also saves time. We don't have to worry about uh, forming the, uh, the URL for ourselves or the path to the file. Now beyond that it used the style sheet tag. So let's have a look what the style sheet tag does. I'm just going to use the find again in Chrome which is a really quick way of finding particular filters. So it generates a style sheet tag. So this should give us all of uh, the link, the href uh, prefix, the, uh, the attributes such as rel and so forth. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm just going to go back to my template and I don't need to save it because it's already in there but let's go and have a look at the source. Now if, where would that be? It would be in the head and here it is. So uh, in our template we have our liquid output which is using the asset URL filter and the style sheet tag filter and what it's generated for us is this whole link to the style sheet. It's also added in the rel attribute, the type attribute and the media attribute. Okay, let's see what else we can do. I already have a reference to a JavaScript file but I'm just going to show you how this works instead. So, in order to generate the link to the JavaScript file I open my curly braces and I pass in the name of the JavaScript file which is shop.js and I'm going to use the asset URL as I did with the stylesheet tag but I'm just going to show you what happens if I don't actually use the second filter there. Now if I refresh that you'll notice that uh, down the bottom here all that Shopify has done for me is output the URL to that particular file for our particular shop. That's not that helpful. So by adding in that final filter which is script tag in this case and save that back out. If we refresh, what actually now happens is that the script is referenced correctly uh, with the type attribute type uh, text slash JavaScript, which is really, really handy. There's a whole bunch of other filters. Those two are some of the most practical ones that you'll, you'll use in your theme. Um, but let's have a look. So what have we got here? We've got a... Um, some ones that we can manipulate uh, text with. Let's have a look. Upcase. Okay. Let's try turning our description all to uppercase. So it was upcase, I believe. I'll save that. And then if I go back to our page, you'll notice that this has actually transformed the text there all into uppercase. It's worth noting here that that is actually in the HTML. It's not like a, a CSS. Uh, text transform is actually output full uppercase characters there for us. Okay, so filters are super useful. They help us generate things like script tags and image tags. Uh, we can also use things like the pluralize filter, which allows us to add an S depending on the number of products and that kind of thing. Uh, I just let me show you that quickly because that is one worth looking at. Now it should be in here. Yes, it is. It's in our cart count. So what we're saying here is uh, the cart.item count, so the piece of data that we're manipulating, this might be uh, say 6, using the pluralized filter and what this does, it'll say if it's um, 1, it'll say item, if it's more than 1, it will say items. So again, that's super handy, it allows us to have really readable text in terms of uh, our item count but not have to worry about trying to work it out. A couple of good places to look, as I said, are the Cheat Sheet by Mark Dunkley. This gives you all the liquid filters, and, and there's quite a few of them, um, and they're worth looking at, because you never know quite when you're going to need them. And of course, the Docs. This is a, a really extensive list of things like HTML filters, so image tag, script tag, uh, style sheet tag, and so forth, as well as other ones like uh, money filters and uh, things to do with URLs as well. So it's really, really, really handy. Hopefully this has given you a nice overview of how you use filters. 
I think the golden rule to remember is that uh, you start with a piece of data on the left and you filter it through one or a number of filters and what's output at the other end will be different. Uh, hopefully that's uh, something you'll remember but uh, if you do need any help please feel free to give me a shout. My email is kia at shopify.com or you can find me on Twitter where my handle is at Kia Whitaker. Thanks a lot for listening.